Right. Today, we will discuss with renowned leaders on how our lives will change. The first speaker is SM Entertainment CEO Lee Sung Soo, who is leading K pop and various cultural projects. He will be our keynote speaker. We will hear from CEO Lee Sung Soo. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Chris Lee, CEO of SM Entertainment. My Korean name is Lee Sung Soo, and my English name is Chris Lee. I am uh, CEO of DSM Entertainment. Uh, it's really glad to meet you guys all here today. Uh, today, I am here at Come Up 2020. It is my honor to be the speaker on the third and final day of Come Up 2020. Thank you uh, for the invitation. I have someone who is really helping me in understanding the cultural trends and sometimes uh, making investment with um, SM Entertainment. And indeed, the uh, future play was uh, the company that contacted me for this occasion. Regarding K-pop and K-Wave, there are a lot of things we can talk about, but I was thinking what I can offer to startup businesses and entrepreneurs, what advice or value can I offer to these people, whether my position and my role will fit in the context of come up 2020 that was my question but as I was preparing for this presentation I came to realize that SM entertainment is a technology driven company I've been saying this for a long time but I didn't really realize that until when I was preparing for this presentation, I'm going to discuss cultural technology and how this is related to your business in the context of COVID-19. You will be able to see how these will fit together. So I changed the title of my presentation, which is different from what is in the program. Here, culture technology shining in the new normal. It's my new title. Now we're living in the new normal era, and cultural technology will shine bright in this new era. Let's take a look. Currently, we are going through this era of untact. In the Western cultures, they use terms like zero contact or contact free. Untact is a newly coined expression used in Korea. Whatever you call it, you can see that we are living in an interesting era, and this new era is impacting every aspect of our life. And as a result, we are experiencing a lot of untact services. These days, a lot of people talk about the new normal. What is new normal? It means that all these things that seem abnormal during this COVID pandemic, you cannot really go to your office. And I am standing here in front of the cameras in the studio instead of talking to a live audience. But I know that there are so many viewers who are watching this presentation virtually. At first, I was not comfortable giving a speech in front of the camera, but after a couple of experiences, I came to get used to it. So this is my new normal, so to speak. In 2021, we may be finally able to overcome the COVID-19 pandemic and open a new era. This is our expectation. And that will coincide with the beginning of the fourth industrial revolution. We have cultural technology. 
And at COMOP 2020, we have many startup companies, and they may do nanotechnology, virtual reality, biotechnology, or AI. So there are all these technological innovations developed by startup companies, and all of these will become the mainstream technology in this new era, and you will be the key players in opening this new era. These new technologies continue to emerge, and I'd like to tell you how our cultural technology will fit into all these technological innovations. Here you see culture technology. If you know English well, you may wonder whether this should be cultural technology or cultural technology. There was some discussion or debate within ourselves. On Thursday next week, we're going to finally make uh, have a heated debate on whether we should call it cultural technology or cultural technology. But in Asia, and for those who are not using English as their native tongues, cultural technology will be easier for them to understand. So that's why we, we use this expression. Let me tell you something interesting. This is called, Shin, this is the Shanghai Evening Post newspaper. The photo you see here in this newspaper was taken in 2000. At that time, HOT, which debuted in 1996, had their first Beijing concert in February 2000. And this was the photo, this was the newspaper that came one day after this concert. For this concert, more than 10,000 people attended, and the tickets were sold out. And as you can see here, Hallyu Tong or Hwang Yu, these Chinese characters mean that the Korean wave is flowing and there are these illegal ticket salespeople. They were busy selling uh, these tickets in the underground market. That was the title of the news article in Shanghai Evening News. Hallyu or Korean wave was used for the first time in a foreign press. So that was back in 2000. So the Korean wave or Hallyu is busy and that was the first time when this new expression, the Korean wave, was used. And the illegal ticket sale sellers were busy. So isn't that interesting? And this photo was taken at that time. The founder of SM Entertainment and also uh, someone who is in charge of all the production is Mr. Isu Man. At that time, producer Isu Man saw this picture and actually he is in this photo. Uh, here's the photo. And you may not be able to see it right away, but over here you see something. Uh, and Isuman saw this and was quite impressed. You see what it is? That was actually the Korean national flag, Taegukki. You can see that in these photos as well. There is this girl who is pointing at the Korean national flag. And over there, uh, we love Tony, we will support you forever. And that is written in Korean. Personally, in 2004, I lived in China for about a year. And when I was in China, I was able to see that a lot of people would carry the Korean national flag with them, where they would carry something that has Korean writing in it. That was uh, 2004, but in 2000, you can see these fans that had Korean flag. What do you think Mr. Isuman was thinking at that time? When you think about culture, it may follow the trajectories of economy and military. So usually economy first and culture next. 
When you think about the Roman Empire, all the paths would go to Rome, and at the same time, the Roman culture, the Roman military, the Roman culture would spread to all over the world. The British Empire, and then the Western forces, especially the US, that gained hegemony after the two world wars. When you think about the, their cultures, their cultures were spread because they had strong economic and military power. But in 2000, Korean culture was gaining popularity when Korean economy was not that influencing in China. So at that time, producer Lee Soo-man decided to change our approach. And he thought that this would be possible. In other words, culture first and economy next can, can happen. And then guess what Lee Soo-man did afterwards? He was producing music, but in addition, he uh, there was a report by Samsung Economic Research Institute, and he read this report on China in order to understand the Chinese country, the Chinese market, China and the Asian countries. How will they connect with the rest of the world? Korea has 40 million population. Are we going to do music business and culture business in Korea only, or are we going to expand further abroad? How can we prepare for this Chinese market that has great potential? So these were the questions that Isuman had at that time. And we thought that we could spread culture, and we could see the Korean flags um, in concerts in China. In 1997, he debuted SES in Japan as well as in Korea. And in 2000, SM's BOA made a huge success in Japan. And then uh, TVQX and Super Junior, EXO and Red Velvet and so on. So there are all these K-pop idols became very successful globally. So like I said, culture is something that has influence, and we wanted to turn culture into technology. It's not just based on our sense or intuition, but make some sort of cultural technology so that we can reach out to the global audience. So at that time, the SM Entertainment that Isuman founded has decided to focus on the future of culture technology. Of course, we're continuing to produce music and culture, but we decided to orient ourselves to culture technology. Let me give you some details about culture technology. There are three stages. First is culture creation. When you look at culture creation, there are four steps. Casting, training, producing, and management. Let's take a look at the first step, which is casting. I'm sure you're familiar with survival programs and audition programs on TV. So you may understand what casting and training is all about. But all these casting and training standards and the prototypes I would say were developed by SK SM, SM Entertainment based on our um, cultural technology. And we continue to develop our cultural technology. So we are carrying out casting and training in a very different format. Let me skip, skip training. Moving on to the third step, which is producing. In this entire cultural technology, Producing will be the most important step. There is this entire culture, and producing is a key here. 
in terms of producing, you can think of many different parts, recording music, learning choreography, and producing music videos, and creating music uh, album artworks, and deciding on the angles of the videos, and the camera will not just shoot from the center, but the camera work will be very delicate to capture all these motions and dance moves of the artists. So from the top or sometimes from the bottom, low, high, and around. And then uh, you will zoom in onto the main singer. You may think this is very obvious because you're used to it, but this is the outcome of hundreds and thousands of different innovations that we've made within culture technology. We have this, but now culture technology has become the driving force of Hallyu or Korean wave. So once again, culture technology, this term was coined by SM Entertainment and Isuman, the producer, created all this idea. Let's go a little deeper. When it comes to producing, we not only cover the traditional ones, but also we decided to expand the concept of production. Lore of EXO was the first attempt. Now, lore, the concept of lore has become a key element in Korean culture. And finally, after we produce these IPs, and there are many artists who have signed with us, and then we're connecting them with the company, the management company, and there's this communication and business operation that are done by the management team. What's the next step? Oh, I'm sorry, before I move on to the next step, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the recent music videos. This is the NCT 2020 album, that's the title song. Make a Wish is the title. And on the right hand side, you can see Super M and the, the ending of the music video one. And this week, Espa Karidashi, you can see here, here in the middle. It's basically the butterflies and the grass. It, ref it reflects the lore, and lore is not just confined to one particular group or artist, but it has become a larger lore that is reflected in all these SM musicians and artists. And this is something that we've been dreaming since 2011. It is basically based on the virtual nation that we've imagined, and we're tr we are now in the process of putting it into reality. So it's going to come up with very interesting contents. So we are uh, producing and creating various interesting contents based on this lore. Here, Shiny, NCT, EXO, and Weishan V. Well, these are wonderful and very popular members. But what about the other members? Well, I'm not saying these other members are not interesting, but we came up with a combination of the members from different groups. It is a collaborative super group called Super M. Last year, it debuted, and then it went to number one in Billboard Top 200. So it was a record. So this is what the culture creation is about, how we create culture within SM Entertainment. The second component of culture technology is culture development. Culture development also has four stages, traditional, crossover, diversified, and imprint. So these are the four steps of cultural development. Let me go over each of them. First of all, tradition. 
There is a lot of IPs and content and artists that we have cultivated in the first stage. And then the second step is cultural development, which is basically monetizing them. The traditional activities have been uh, done in the music industry for a long time. On the left-hand side, you can see Irene and Sulgi unit of Red Velvet, and that's the CD case. It's very pretty. As for TQVX, I think that was 2017 or 2018. The two members finished their armed military services, so they put on a concert at Nissan Studio in Japan. 70,000 people can come in here for a day, and 210,000 people uh, attended this concert for three days. And back then, um, they got the best uh, ticket sales in Japan. And here you can see Poa. Poa is a director at SM Entertainment. And uh, you can see this example of Apple Music and uh, Spotify, Spotify ticket list and NCT 2020. Uh, there are new formats and new types of CDs and uh, live concerts and merchandise. These are rather traditional uh, revenue sources in the music industry. And we utilize the traditional revenue sources as well. And we will conduct a lot of activities for these artists. I'd like to go over the history of SM Entertainment very briefly. HOT debuted in 1996. And they were the trigger of the use of idol or K-pop music. They marked the beginning of K-pop. They are the first and the best K-pop idol, and there are many artists, but I would like to skip some and um, introduce some of them. In 2000, Poa, we call, him, we call her Director Poa, but she debuted in 2000, and this year is 2020, so we will celebrate the 20th anniversary of Poa's debut. And next month, in December, we're going to release the commemorative album of Poa, in celebrating her 20 years. The title song is Better. It is a wonderful song. I hope that you will check it out because you can see, uh, you can hear the music and watch the music video and the choreography together. In Japan, for the first time in uh, Korean music history, Boa got the number one on Oricon chart in Japan, and that opened up. Uh, a lot of doors to the Japanese market for Korean artists. Next is TVXQ and then Super Junior, debuted in 2005. And in 2009, along with the development of YouTube, Korean content was broadcast. And their K-pop hit, Sorry Sorry, was very popular. So they were the one who came up with the term K-pop hit. And then uh, Girls' Generation, the title song was G, and that was a huge hit. EXO debuted in 2013, and they had XOK and XOK, XOM. Each has six members. That was an, a new concept once again. They will release their songs and created this new cultural phenomenon. For the past 10 years, they've been producing albums and music, all uh, million sellers, and so far have sold more than 12 million copies in Korea. One member of EXO is Baekhyun, and this year, he released his second solo album and was able to sell a million copies. And as a solo artist, it's been a while, in the early 2000s, because of um, music streaming sites, the music industry was sh shifting to the online uh, platform, but Baekhyun was able to sell more than a million copies. And Red Velvet, recently there was some controversy, but I like we made an apology and we would make sure that Red Velvet would become even more mature. I hope that you will continue to provide them with support. And NCT 2020 album was released, 
So this is a new appearance, and it's a completely new format of team and brand. It's not just a single team, Elite, uh, NCT Elites, NCT 127, NCT Dream, NCT U, and Wavy. So these are all belonging to NCT, and this is an unlimited expansion potential. Uh, in Japan and in Southeast Asia, we have many cities, and also in Europe and US and Australia and Africa. We are planning to expand the NCT platform globally. It may not be it may be hard for you to understand or imagine, and it is not going to be easy, but we're going to make it happen. And then there are many trainees who are signed up with SM Entertainment, and they're working really hard and practicing. They're practicing to become the next stars. And next year, there will be another unit of NCT who will make a debut next year. We had Super M, but since I've already explained to you about it, I'm going to go over. Next, crossover. We not only support people and stars to be a singer, but we also make them uh, have successful crossovers between different genres. And also, we use hologram, AR, and games, and we even cooperate with Marvel to c create con merchandise and content. And also, we're doing the crossover with classical music as well. In Scream Records, what we do is we uh, record our music into EDM music. And the next is cultural e expansion. So. What we have monetized in cultural development, we're expanding to other cultural aspects. Experiential and platform would be the two systems. First, experiential is an expansion into an area where people can experience F&B, travel, retail. These are the exper experiential branch of our expansion. We are in process of opening SMT LA, which is the expansion of SMT Seoul. And then we're going to also have an SMT Square. You can see this on news, and it's already out in the media. So there's this experiential part, but there's also the platform-based culture expansion. You can listen to music, or you could even sing karaoke, or you could communicate with your fans, and there's also the bubble feature. And on top of that, we have Beyond Live. This is something that we have launched early this year. This is the first non-contact concert. It, we prepared this not this year when COVID-19 became rampant, but we prepared it last year. So when COVID-19 actually arrived, we were able to start this new platform. There's six new teams who have been uh, shown on uh, Beyond Live. You can see Liu Xiwon, uh, uh, Che Xiwon on the upper middle side. And you can see these concert screens in which it seems like there's a helicopter flying around. And also, you're able to experience something new that you have never experienced before. The fans can be invited to the concert, and they can communicate with the stars, and this is in Indeed, a new normal type of concert. And this new type of concert that we have launched and a combination with the old or existing concert, we are preparing a new type of concert at the end of this year. We believe that we will be able to surprise all of you once again. So we ask for your active interest and support. And those 
startups who are watching this uh, presentation, if you are interested in participating in this type of a new concert, or if you have any new technologies or new ideas to share with us, please contact us. We're always open to those new ideas and partners. And we are always ready to listen to your recommendations and comments. This is now going even beyond, beyond live. This is beyond drive. So we add advertisement and contents onto Beyond Life. So it is a creation of a new type of advertisement and a new type of media platform. EXO and Super M's um, uh, star Kai and Kaina of ASPA is creating a 25 second contents and you can check this on YouTube. So we have done cultural creation, cultural development, and cultural expansion. So it's CDE. Through this cultural technology, we are trying to prepare for the new normal. One example. Last year, NCT 127 has published a, a album called Superhuman. And it was with collaboration with Intel Studio, we created an AI product. And that was culture creation. And through cultural development, we have created the superhuman AR. And we don't stop there. We do cultural expansion. But we don't, but as you can see, the superhuman AR. You can see in the middle, there's the girls' generation hologram in Gangnam Station. And for the first time in 2015, we have created a hologram musical. And on the bottom side, you can see that in the musical, a dragon appears and shoots fire. And on the left-hand side, you can see the hollow box, with, which we produce with KT with SK Telecom, excuse me. And we don't end at culture expansion. It becomes a virtual cycle and it becomes, it goes back to cultural creation or IP stage. A good example would be ASPA, which has just been launched this week. ASPA is a totally new type of team. You can see that there's eight members, right? But if you take a closer look, four are human members and four are virtual members. They are avatars. We have uh, published this on YouTube. And 21 million view uh, hits was recorded. And I think this was indeed a record hit, not just in Korea, but also in the world. ESPA has been, is, has been really phenomenal. So there's a human star and also an avatar star that goes along with that star. And a new type of worldview, which is in the virtual reality and also in the reality world, communicate with one another. So ASPA is indeed a totally new type of group. And ASPA's worldview does not end in ASPA, but it in covers Red Velvet, NCT, Super Junior, TV, XQ, even BOA. All of the artists are performing and working within the SM universe. And this is being realized in not only reality, but also in virtual reality. Producer Isuman 
In 2017, December, went to Vietnam for the Meigyeong Vietnam Forum in Hanoi. And he said that there will be a world of celebrities and the world of robots and even go further and the world of avatars will dawn. And that is the advent of a gigantic virtual empire that we are seeing right now. In 2011 at the World Knowledge Forum and at the same year, in 2012, we have announced SM Town Virtual Nation and we came up with a passport and we have given it to fans and we would provide them custom stamps at different SM events and cultural centers and we provide them we provided them with benefits now we don't do these type of physical passports anymore NCT and ESPA, these members and fans can meet real time on stage. And these type of new reality is occurring within the universe of SM. And this is all possible thanks to worldview. Whether we watch cartoon or webtoon, worldview isn't just a story for these type of genres. But worldview is in the core of culture technology and it is in line with all the music video and all the producing uh, cycles and it will create a virtuous cycle and it also will touch the hearts of all the fans, all the viewers. And that's how you can understand this concept of lore or worldview. And that's how we created the worldview of EXO, lore of EXOR. SM Culture Universe. Already in 2011, producer Lee Suman has called this SM's virtual music nation and has announced this. The new normal in which AR and VR is going to be rampant. If you think that that's the world of avatars and robots, SM is already providing you contents that is befitting this new normal. As a cultural company, that was the role that we had to play. There's a lot of people listening to me and a lot of startups who are in the technology industry, students or people who are interested, those who want to invest, those who wants to have a better understanding. I want to advise you to really advance that type of technology. I hope you are the ones who lead the new normal era. We will be the ones who make it entertaining. We will make it fun. Everything that was in our imagination or in the movies now is becoming a reality. Producer Lee Suman, who was a musician, but who also had his background in um, engineering was able to create this type of a culture technology and SM will create to will continue to create such interesting and creative business and technology thank you for your attention I hope you're all safe and have a wonderful weekend thank you Thank you very much, Chris Lee from SM Entertainment for his keynote presentation. We were able to understand how cultural technology would shine in this non-contact era. And I was very impressed.